Welcome to Brightly You Radiant Being, the show that wildly recognizes, encourages, and invests in the radiance we all carry so you can shine your brightest. Each episode, we share soul-driven advice and topics to help you live more brightly in mind, body, and spirit. Through sharing our experiences, friendship, and passions, we hope to impact you to step more brightly into yourself, inch by inch. Hi, Amy. Hey, Tracy. How are you doing? I'm feeling real vulnerable right now. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Well, Why? Uh, so uh, with, with, with the magic of technology, as many of you may have caught on, sometimes we record multiples of these together. So we just finished the Rebel episode and I shared there are some goals that I've rebelled against <laughs> even setting. <laughs> yeah. And so I do the level 10 life. And so one of those areas is relationships. So love, mm-hmm. family, friends. Um, and I mean, I like my friends and I like my family, but as you hear a lot, uh, (laughs) they all have their own friends and family (laughs) and love. And so I'm left like having these great groups of people that can't give as much time to me as I have available in my life for relationships, for partnerships, friends, things like that. So I I dabbled in Bumble BFF. I'm on Bumble for dating and just like doing that dance of like trying to make friends. And part of me is amazed at how many other people just aren't good at it, at either making or maintaining. And then also throughout that, I'm also like, well, am I any good at it? Is it, am I the problem? (laughs) Am I the drama? (laughs) Uh, so yeah, so I didn't know if that like would fit into the show anywhere, but like that was one of the goal areas I was alluding to in episode 63, um, that I'm avoiding because I just, there's yeah. another person, right? Multiple other people. Um, yeah. and I a think lot it's of amazing times- though, that through your, like, like being a part of Bumble BFF and, and the Bumble dating that you've noticed that other people aren't that people just aren't good at it. Well, not only that, like the one nice thing to come out of the past two years, uh, you know, uh, uh, not to be glib about all the horrific things, but a lot of people were lonely before this. And it really put a spotlight on loneliness and adults Mm -hmm. in general of both Mm -hmm. sexes. Whereas I think before it was really uh, focused on a certain age group and a certain demographic. And now it's just like, wow, we're all going through this. And you can even right. be lonely and, and, and be in a marriage, um, mm-hmm. you know, and, and, and not even to say that um, you're not close with that person, but you need more than a person, right? Like you need many different relationships in your life. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I think that that's, thank you, first of all, for sharing that. And secondly, that, that does fit in wonderfully with what we're talking about. Like how, I think so often when we think about being in a relationship, we think about the other person, right? We think about who we would want to be in a relationship with, how they should act, how they would treat us. It's what always I like this. in my life. Yes. And we don't necessarily think, how could I be a good partner? How could I be a good friend? I think of it. I think I've brought this up on the show before that I'll get invited to these long-standing groups of friends events. And one of the ones that I went to was like a week in Portland with these people that from my perspective, have known each other since high school, right. And off and on mm-hmm. and hang out, you know, and so they have established relationships and I was just like, what do I bring to the party? Right. Like, <laughs> what, what do I bring? Cause because it's not the party. <laughs> like, like I'll join the party, but I don't bring the party. And someone was like, well, you're, you'll be like the mom of the group. I'm like, there are literal moms in the group. Like we can't apply what I do in our one-on-one dynamic with like this group of eight. What do I bring? And everybody was so surprised that it was bothering to ask that. And people are like, people don't think like that. Just show up and have a good time. And I was like, no, I think it's important to be aware of what you're bringing to the group because I knew enough to know this bachelorette weekend away wasn't going to want to do some Kundalini meditation yoga exercises with me. Right. Like, (laughs) right. Like 
I, but they also don't want to take care of me because like I said, there are literal moms in the group, right? But then also it's that balance of, but we're also adults. So I know I'm not going to a kegger. And so what am I going to bring? What am I going to show up with? What can I contribute from an okay. energy perspective from yeah. skill set? So not, all that, yeah. I think it's, I think that that's great that, that you had enough self-awareness to actually be asking that question because I don't think most people do ask that question. Most people are like, I'm here. Yes. Like I, I just know me. I don't have that ability. But, <laughs> but I also think that you can get hyper aware of that mm -hmm. and then just be focused on like, oh, what do I have to bring to the group? What do I have to bring to the group? And then you don't even take the time to have fun. Or and that is the open. ability that I do have. So yeah. <laughs> you nailed it. So, to, so how, how do you build, how do you do, how, how do you have that balance? Whether it's, I mean, yeah. there are different types of relationships, obviously. I named the ones that I'm thinking of in my life. Yeah. yeah. So well, yeah, you have a relationship. I mean, we've talked about this a lot, having a relationship with yourself, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't think we ever think about what am I bringing to the table for myself, but maybe we should think about that. And then of course, relationships with your friends, your families, if you know, whether you have a love interest or not, whether you want one, your relationship with how you live your life, your goals, like there are many different ways you partner with other people Ooh, and partner. That's what I was missing. It felt all on me because I didn't want to put it on the bride. Right. But yeah, I and have you else aren't to like reach out to, right. You're not the only person it is. And I think if we think about it, as a partnership, there's, there's like two aspects, right? It's not just the other person. It's not just you. It's you together. And in fact, I, the psychology today has a brilliant quote. Hmm. Um, and I feel like I've heard it before. And I don't know if I was just on the website, like two years ago or something, well, what is but it? anyways, it's healthy relationships, healthy, healthy relationships reflect an ongoing effort from both partners to address the needs of me, you, and us. Mm. So and, there's, there's two things there that I love. One yeah. that you addressed, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. Exactly. That there's a spark when you get these two people together. And when you bring yeah. in a third or when you take someone away, like you mm -hmm. can't just replace it. Like there's just, there's a magic there. Yeah. But then also, you know, for the healthy part, which you get to define what healthy means, mm -hmm. but the me, you, and us and achieving that. And the, what do you say? A reflection of an ongoing effort. I once worked with a woman who just prior to, um, her wedding with her partner brought up, um, cause it's like, you are working an awful lot. You have a wedding coming up. You got this, like, how can we help you take this off your plate? And she goes, Tracy, it's not 50, 50, sometimes it's 90, 10. And we talked about it and she's okay with this. And I was like, damn, that is, I, wow. Like that just showed my inexperience right there. Sometimes it is 90, 10, but the thing is they yeah. talked about it. They right. both knew about it. They knew how it was going to affect it and it wasn't going to stay 90, 10. And sometimes it would be 10, 90 and the other, right? Like there's this constant and ebb and it's flow. It's brilliant. It's brilliant, Tracy, because it actually goes on, the quote actually goes on to say, like, uh, um, everyday effort by one partner changes the relationship for the other partner, because it's difficult to to have this consistency of like, you're here, and I'm here, and we're here, right? Sometimes mm -hmm. I'm going to be here, you're going to be down there. And I'm going to have to maybe do a little bit more to help you get up a little bit more. So your behavior can actually influence your partners, like how your partner behaves, and but it yes. should never be always 90, 10, right? I also love that it highlights, and I think this, this should absolutely apply in groups and families, but that we are still individuals within a partnership. Yes. And so if I was, if I had depression before I entered this partnership, maybe even if it wasn't like an active episode of it, 
I'm still somebody with depression. I'm going to get depressed. And the other person, it's not because of them. And it's also, they can't fix it, right? Like when you look at it as me, you, and us, you retain your individuality while building that partners, that other thing, you get to build that third entity you brought up. Yeah. I love that, that you talked, yeah, that you are building this other thing. Um, It's, it's so, it's, it almost feels like um, a relief in a way to think about it this way and to actually maybe intentionally think about it as it's not just you, it's not just me, it's us and we are are building this thing together. And sometimes you might have to work harder and sometimes I might have to work harder. But you also said something that I really liked, like you, you, that the couple that you were talking about it, yeah. they talked about it. They talked like they about communicated it. this thing with each other. And of course, that's one of the things, um, something that I love with, I feel like with almost anything we talk about, you can Google it. And the funny thing is, is that a lot of times you'll get sort of business related uh, subjects that come up, but it's super easy to take that and just transpose it onto what it is that you need. So I did look at, like, I went to inc.com for partnerships. Like, how do you build a good partnership? Yeah. And, and it seemed like it was four steps or like clear expectations, Mm -hmm. like absolutely clear expectations should be a given. And I feel like we've talked about that in readiness, in leadership, in control, like all across the board, consider your partner as part of your team. Now, granted, this is like this company and then this other company, but what if instead of just like even thinking us, you're like, we're a team. And the only way we are going to like get ahead, succeed is to act as a team. And that depersonalizes conflict. So instead of yes. why didn't you take the trash out, it becomes how are we gonna, how are we going to get the trash taken out? That the the thing isn't you not doing something. The thing is we have something we have to achieve. It's not getting done. How can we achieve it? Right. I love uh, that. Right. Like it's just yes. it 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 in interpersonal relationships, especially romantic or even roommates, it's so easy to forget that you're in it with someone else and to yeah. see them as like the, the culprit or the thing that's affecting the you. But yeah. like you said earlier, if there's a you and a me and a we or an us, then you can kind of reframe what you're going through mm-hmm. and, and try and word things, but it takes an intentionality. And I think that's something that when you first meet and click with someone in any regards, you don't need the intentionality, right? Because the expectations are just kind of implied and like yes. the chemistry and the feeling. Mm-hmm. But then when that wears off, if you don't have the awareness to know or the ability to be vulnerable, for example, anytime you and I have a podcast meeting, I tend to start it off with, oh, hey, yeah, I've been meaning to ask, do you still want to do this? <laughs> before we sit down and sketch out six months of episodes still having fun we still doing it for the same reasons anything you want to change right and yeah and that's also something I'm like oh I have to ask myself that too and I have to be ready to share that with you whatever it is right yeah yeah Uh, because it's really easy for us to continue and be like well this is going really well and we meet every Friday and this is you know this and and not notice when the other person has just started like putting in the, um, yeah. just going with the grind. Right. And not yeah. necessarily phoning it in, but maybe it's not the same for them anymore. Yeah. And that's one of the steps too, is like honesty and transparency. Like you have to have that open communication. And then one other thing that they mentioned was give the partnership room to grow. Mm. And so for me, what I thought of is like when you are in a new relationship, especially, I mean, it's happened with friendships too. Like we've talked about aggressive friendship and uh, where you're just like, oh, I love you. Well, maybe not a friendship. You're not doing that, but you're just like smothering the other person. Like that's one thing. But also if someone changes and starts to grow, are you going to be okay with that? I mean, you that know can... what 
what you're okay with before it happens, right? Yeah. Like, not just, oh, they're different, but like, oh, now they do this and this is against my morals and my values. Yeah. Or now they do this and this is still in line with the things, or this is a value I didn't realize I have too. And now I also want to grow in that direction, right? Like you have to have self-awareness of yourself within a team to know what you're willing to continue to be a partner with yeah. or in. Yeah. So what I love about that, give the partnership room to grow so we, the past few episodes unintentionally, we've been treating ourselves as a business, right? I'm the CEO of my own life. Yeah. I have a human resources department in me. That's like managing, um, my, my relationships and, and like, they're, they're like my talent acquisition, right. To find me friends, um, and nurture them and, and give them, um, you know, total reward benefits, <laughs> you know, like, here's what you get being in a, <laughs> in a partnership with me, but for, if you were to view your, your, your life as a company and yourself as a CEO, you would prize professional and personal development. You would invest in that. You would expect that of your team That's and you would expect that point. of yourself. And yes. so are you also doing that within sharing your resources, sharing your learnings, sharing your goals, listening to others, right? And then the, the other part, so... Um, you said, what is it? Consider your partner as part of your team. Yes. There's a few different couples I follow on TikTok and they're not even, they're not even therapists. But when, when I studied, um, family and marriage therapy, one thing that I've always kept in mind is a Sunday check-in or a family check-in, or, a, you know, mm -hmm. you can pick the day of the week, but every week, yeah. kind of like what I do with you with the podcast, like, are we still vibing? Are you still liking this? Um, would you like to see more of me or less of me this week? Or should we spend more? It doesn't have to be about me. It can be like, should we spend more time together or less? What do you need this week first? You know, and like, and that's how you manage your expectations is every week you're consciously checking in on that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you can run it like a 15 minute stand up meeting. It can be, it doesn't have to be all like bubbly and sweet in a love relationship. Or like, I even had a friend where I was like, my God, we spend a lot of time together. Is this damaging other areas of our life? Like, are we, <laughs> are we maybe avoiding filling other <laughs> relationships because mm -hmm. we're just getting along so well? And are we okay with mm -hmm. that? Right. Like, or like, Hey, I need a lot right now because I am going through a breakup or because, you know, this is happening in my life. Um, so I love, yeah. Yeah. If you consider it as part of your team that helps you with that expectation setting, cause you can create those rituals and routines within the partnership. Absolutely. I, I think that, um, for, for me personally, I don't think we have a set like Sunday, we're going to do this and check in with each other, but it seems to be fairly cyclical in our life where every few months we do have kind of a what's happening? Are we good with this? Where do we see ourselves? Like, what are we working towards? Are our goals still the same? You know, so we do, um, but ours is, it feels more organic and believe me, I've tried to be like, let's have a Sunday check-in. And then, you know, Rick looks at me like, I'm no, I'm you've also, how long have you been together too? some partnerships at a certain yeah. point, you have a different ebb and flow. Absolutely. We do. And I feel like we can at any point just be like, wait a minute, this doesn't feel like it's good or healthy for our relationship or whatever. Yeah. We've been married for it. Well, it'll be 24 years this year. We'll be right. married. But mm -hmm. so on the flip side for the Bumble BFF, which is like finding a same sex best friend um, portion of a, of a dating app. Um, I met a woman who was specifically looking for vegan and vegetarian friends and I'm vegetarian. She's a diehard vegan. And so she wants someone to go to events with and talk about these topics with that she can't with other people in her life or that just aren't interested in that. Mm -hmm. So we met and we've hung out a few times, but what I found by her being so specific with that, it's helped me be more specific where I really like her oh. and like, we do get along, but I don't just want a friend to attend these events with. I don't mm -hmm. only want to hang out only if we're going to one of these restaurants or only if this event, like I'm looking for more than that in my life. I'm looking for a more broad world. And, and she has all of that in her life. 
And consequently, oh, so there's a- you were just filling one tiny specific niche yes. of hers. And I okay. had a much bigger role I was looking for yeah. in friendship. And then there's another woman that we hit it off right away. Um, and our first session, we just talked for hours and have so much in common. But then the two times we hung out afterwards, she was on a really limited time schedule because her, um, so she was an out of state transplant for work. And so was her um, partner and he was having difficulty making friends. And so she didn't want him to leave him alone for more than an hour. And I've just come to realize They need couple friends. She doesn't need a single girlfriend to go and do things with yet. They need people that they can do things together and separately so that he's not always being left alone. And I'm not feeling like I'm on a clock. Right. So it's just like these things that as we talk about it um, and like, none of us have been like, we can't be friends anymore. We just have hung out less and less, or, Mm -hmm. you know, it's just apparent what I'm going to get out of the relationship. Um, but it's, it's those things that if you don't know what you're looking for, you're not going to get what you need. No, <laughs> no, you're not. But I also like the fact that you brought up that even though you liked the one woman who was the diehard vegan, that you realized like you, you couldn't be the good partner for her, no. right? You just couldn't fill that because she wasn't filling your need. Well, but it's also, you know, I'd love to try the, we have great vegan restaurants in the area and I'd love having someone to go to, yeah. um, to try those out. But when we're there, I don't only want to talk about animal advocacy, right? Like, like I, I have lots of people in my life who are also vegetarian and vegan or different parts of their journey who mm-hmm. are willing to talk about it. And I'm just at a different stage in that part of my life. Um, whereas it's all she wants to do with somebody who's similar to that. And I was like, that I I want a more, I I need a more well-rounded friend than that. Exactly. Uh, Exactly. I'm not writing her off, but I know I have to keep looking. So I truly feel like it can't be one or the other. You can't be totally focused on this is this outside partner friend that I need. This is exactly what I need. And you don't look at yourself at all. Nor can you be, how can I be the best person out there for any friend? And I can be completely supportive and not expect anything from them, right? It's that whole- (laughs) It's a terrible balance of authenticity and genuineness. You just have to be yourself, Amy. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But I do think it's really important that when we're talking about being a partner- Um, being a good partner, having a good partnership, that you don't focus on just one aspect of it, just yourself or just how the other person Mm -hmm. is or what you view them as. It has to be a two-way street. But And I guess when I was first thinking about this, I was thinking more about how to be a good partner because so often we do think about the other person and how they should be the good. There we go. Let me just turn that phone off, (laughs) how they should be and how they should act. But I do think that this needs to be a two-way street. And, And I think that one of the things, again, I love the, like the expectations. You need to be clear what your expectations are, and you need to understand what the other person's expectations are, whether it's for life, for the relationship, where you are right now. I just, I, I, you have to be clear on that. And so then you have to be clear on what are your expectations? Do you think you're clear on what your expectations are for a friend? Cause I'm, I'm sitting here going, Am I clear on what I would want in a friend? So in certain aspects, yes, because I've, I've, I've a dating profile for friendship. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so I, I put it out exactly what I'm looking for. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, right now I'm at a stage in my life where the majority of my friends have little babies. And so it's not that I don't have friends. It's not that I don't have um, great relationships and that I don't feel supported. It's that people don't have 
time at the moment to spend. So I'm looking to go out. I'm looking for the Friday night, Saturday night. I'm looking for board games and concert dates and, and, you know, and this and that. So I'm being really specific in what I'm looking for. Um, And then I appreciate the people that are like, I'm looking for a Saturday morning coffee and that's it. Right. Like, like I, when my boyfriend and I, you know, can't be together, I'm looking for someone to hang out with then, but my Friday and Saturday nights are date nights, right? Like I like the people who put the hard stuff out there because mm-hmm. although I'm sure we'd get along and they're lovely, it, that's not what I want. Right. And I'm not going to match what, what they want. Mm-hmm. Um, but then it's also something like, um, I, we were just talking about this. I still, even when I know what the people in my life are um, putting out there that they're wanting and that they're needing or able to do or what they can give or what they're looking for, I'll still reach out with an invite and I'll let them decline, right? I'll let them Mm -hmm. um, be in charge of what, you know, like I'll still open the doors and the invitation. I won't presume to know based on prior declines or prior stuff going on. I think that's a really good point. Don't, don't presume or assume, you know, what the other person wants or needs. And then I also kind of how I started the show with vulnerability. I'm really mm-hmm. open with current friends and other friends. I'm feeling lonely. I'm feeling this. I want to do this. I want to hibernate. This is what I need. And I put it out there, not in a, I need you to give it to me way, but in a, like, this is mm-hmm. what I'm going through way. And then if they, you know, either they can listen, it's kind of that old adage with like friends or family or lovers. And we're just like, do you, do you want to vent or do you want help? Right? Like, do you want to problem yeah. solve or are you just going to talk? I think you are so adept at that though, of actually telling people what, how you're feeling and what it is you need. I don't think other people necessarily, um, are good at, maybe it's the fact that they might not be good at even figuring out what they're feeling. Like they might not understand what the emotion is that they're feeling. So I feel like you are very adept at that. And I think that if people can, um, can nurture that in themselves to be able to talk about that because that's part of open and honest communication is actually stating this is how I feel and this is what I need because of it. And I mean, there's two things. One, I can put that out there. And even if they use their words like, oh yeah, I'll listen to you vent. I'm still going to get problem solving and resources. And then I also know I do that to people too. Right. And Mm -hmm. so part of it is just trying to set the stage. But then what I've also seen in my relationships is the more I try and work on that part of what I can give the relationship is setting my needs, right. Letting people know, setting Mm -hmm. expectations, stating what I need, what I want, what I'm feeling, the more I see it modeled back or reciprocated, right? Yeah, and yeah. so then, you know, if you want to see something in your relationship, instead of asking for it or talking about what you're not getting, just do it. And then if you do it enough, it'll mm-hmm. become a part of it. So instead of being like, we need to hold a Sunday check-in instead on just a day, be like, Hey, are you open to talking about how our week went as a, as, as a partnership? Uh, I love that. Right. Like just, just do it. Yeah. And then and that, also be open if they're like, right. I didn't like this or no, I don't, <laughs> you know, that, and, that's you know, something you have to hear. Here's, here's the funny thing with the whole modeling um, aspect of that is that as a parent, when my kids were younger, I understood that completely. Like you model the behavior that you want your children to, to, um, to present. Right. Mm-hmm. And so, but you don't, I didn't necessarily, I don't think I equated that with relationships, even though I think somewhere in me I did, but I think it was much more intentional with the kids. So I think that's a great point to just model the behavior that you want reflected back. I mean, going back to that whole, you know, company thing, team thing. When I was a supervisor, that's how I ran my teams. I wasn't a dictator. I, even though I did hold a certain level above them and people reported to me in a sense, Mm -hmm. I was still a part of the team, right? Right. I, yeah. And and so you, you have to show up as you want others to show up for you. Yes. Yes. And then as you see them show up in certain ways, you have to see Mm -hmm. and figure out if you're willing to show up in that way. Too. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes it might, sometimes I think too, because we've also talked about 
like the five love languages. And I know mm-hmm. you've shared too that whatever you might think of the the author, the love languages, I mean, that's just something that people understand, it right? Right. It There's- does resonate. Yeah. And so your love language might be one thing and your partner's might be something different. And so even though that doesn't quite, that's not quite like modeling and reflecting. But if you want your love language reflected back to you, you need to be willing to speak your partners, your friends, your love interests, love language. I think any partnership, you can't expect reciprocation. It's a a very good point. You cannot go, well, I'll do this for them as long as they do this thing for me. Right. Or I have been doing acts of service for them for 10 years and they can't even make the bed. Well, have you asked them to make the bed? Exactly. One of my favorite recent TikToks is uh, after 24 years, the husband is now in charge of making the bed. And so the wife took a video or a photo the first time because she's like, he clearly doesn't know where the pillows go after 24 years. (laughs) But then the next day, he put them a different way. He is intentionally putting these uh, numerous accent pillows in different ways, building forts. It's like on a cruise ship when every day you come back, the towels and the blankets are in different <laughs> shapes. This man is clearly having fun with the fact that his wife doesn't think he knows how the pillows go. Who knows? Who knows? But she had to release control of something, let him do it his way, and also state, like, I don't want to do this anymore. I want you to do it, right? Like, And then, you know, you got to give people time too, right? Like if things are changing in relationships and stuff like that, you can't expect immediateness, but it's, you have to be willing to reciprocate some things, but you also can't be expecting reciprocation because it all comes down to communicate. You have to talk. You have to, you have to talk. It does. You do have to talk. I can remember. Uh, Well, sometimes he still does it. Sometimes Rick will ask for something and I'm using air quotations by joking about something like have you ever noticed well it's like he's got a stand-up routine and it's it's something that I've done or haven't done oh, and then I laugh the blow. he's softening yeah. the blow so, of the feedback and then I laugh about it and he laughs about it and then I tra la go along my day and then he finally like you know after like five months of joking about something will go, why won't you do that? I'm like, why can't you just ask me to do it? Yeah. I thought it was funny. (laughs) You kept joking. I thought it was. Did we go from teasing to, oh, this is going to end our relationship. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) So now it's much better. It's like, if you want me to do something, just tell me. And then I have a feeling you're also maybe better in a situation that if he does revert back to the joking and the teasing, you might stop and say, is this really bugging you? Oh, instead of waiting five months, right? Like absolutely at this point, if he jokes about something, I'm like, is this actually a joke or should, is this bothering you? And then he's very much, he can say, no, it's a joke. Or he can say, it really bothers me. And I'd be like, okay, I just need to know that's that's the thing because I I've talked about, I have great neighbors on one side of me. I have a fabulous neighbor on the other side, but she's 95 and doesn't leave unless I like ring her doorbell. Um, but so I very out of character for them. I woke up at 2am, not unusual for me, but I not only could hear their music, but I could sing along. Like I could hear lyrics. Oh, like, wow. It, yeah. It was, it was objectively loud. <laughs> I am usually awake. I like to the song they never do it. I was going to let it go. They have neighbors on the other side of them with the baby who Mm. they aren't close with, don't even know their names of that. I was like, I don't know if they can hear it on that side. Right. Like, I don't know what the other neighbors are going to think. Uh, I'm going to send a text. And so I was just like, Hey, having a good time. (laughs) (laughs) And some music emojis, right. Like having a good night. And so, you know, they turned it down. They, they texted me back pretty quickly. Um, and, and like, they went on with their night. I went on with mine, but then the next day I got a long apology text and he was just like, I'm really sorry if I was a nuisance, that's my least favorite thing to be. And like, he was making it clear, like not once was I mean about it or even like, how dare you wake me up or like, you know, like what a terrible name, you know, nothing like that. And I'm not even, I'm not passive aggressive, but like, he cares enough to be like, 
that's out of character for me. It's not how I want to be seen. It's not how I want to treat you. Yeah. Right. So he, he didn't wait for me to be like, Hey, this was a problem to come out and apologize. And I was also very quick to be like forgiving of it. Right. Like we're all going to make noise at some point. I, I figure I'm probably going to be a nuisance to you in, in a different way, mm-hmm. but like we somehow the three of us just kind of have created that communication of like, oh, did I step on your toes here? Or, oh, did I do this? Or, oh, did I do that? And I'm so sorry before it becomes an issue, before Ooh, someone's key. annoying, yeah. right? Yeah. Like you have to, it's that self-awareness piece enough to be like, oh, I messed up and I'm not going to wait for the person to tell me they're yeah. hurt. I'm, I, even if they're not hurt, even if it's a little thing, I'm going to acknowledge I messed up. I'm going to be accountable in this partnership for what I want to bring to it. Mm-hmm. And the standard I want to hold myself to, and I want them to hold me to, right? Like we're just neighbors. Like he didn't have to do that. Like he, he apologized briefly. But you're still, myself. you're in a neighborhood partnership, right? Like we're <laughs> a community, <laughs> damn it. No, um, You're a team. <laughs> but so it's just, it's one of those things like that just illustrated to me, like, um, it doesn't feel good to acknowledge you did something wrong, right? Especially to somebody in a neighbor relationship, you don't have a strong bond with, right? Like, or, mm-hmm. and, and conversely, somebody you do have a really strong bond with who you do want to like you a lot, who you want to love you to be like, oh, I'm fallible, <laughs> right? To be the yeah. first to say it. But it's, so it's, I, I'm going to, it's not in the notes. I'm going to say one of the keys to being a good partner is being vulnerable. Absolutely. I agree. And in fact, actually in the notes, it says, and more that might come up. So, you know, it's like, and other duties as assigned (laughs) being vulnerable. I think that's brilliant, Tracy. You have to be vulnerable in order to apologize or say you might've made a mistake or Or hear critical feedback, right? You have to open to receive. It's not just about giving. What can I do? In. I tell you, that was a tough one that, that we have learned, um, Rick and I, in our relationship is that critical feedback is to be able to listen without mm. putting up those, those barriers. Oh you know? yeah. What do they call them? The, the four horsemen of the apocalypse by Gottman. One mm-hmm. of them is stonewalling. So if you have any of those four character characteristics of these four horsemen of the apocalypse, he describes, it's kind of like death to the relationship. And so that's one of those things that in a partnership, I feel like you kind of have to know the signs of so that you don't do it. Right. Um, Have you heard of that term before? The four horsemen of the apocalypse in in terms of relationships? No, I hadn't. I hadn't heard of that. And I guess for me, I'm not sure if it would be stonewalling. I feel more, it was like shields up Scotty, you know, like, okay. So, so that's the third is defensiveness, right? And that would be where we would go to. But now we have gotten to such a great space where we can say, just, I just want you to listen to me um, and, and just hear what I'm saying. And then we can talk about it. And, and I feel like we're vulnerable with each other and with ourselves. And we, in that way, because because I might show vulnerability to him. He might show it to me. We trust each other so that we can listen to that, to any kind of critical information that could come in. That's such a great example of even a great partnership will have conflict. The sign of a great (laughs) partnership isn't lack of conflict. I've talked before. I had a a friendship Mm -hmm. kind of die Um, and it kind of was like a gradual slow death. It wasn't like a breakup. Nobody said anything, but it was kind of more painful at the time because there was a con an unspoken conflict where I knew the other person was upset with something I said and did. I wasn't aware of what it was. I wasn't aware of what the conflict was, but I could tell they were unhappy. And so I was just waiting to receive, to discuss, to find out, you know, constantly checking in. Do you want to hang out? Do you want to talk? Do you want to this? Do you want to that? And they, it wasn't worth it enough to them to engage in the conflict. I think the conflict to them was kind of a sign that maybe this friendship wasn't that great, right? Like it had been so easy for two and a half years until that point. Um, And it was the first time we would have ever had a fight or we would have ever had anything like that. And I think to them, the fact that this conflict occurred was a sign that I wasn't on their side, that I wasn't a part of the partnership, that I wasn't fully in the friendship. Whereas to me, 
conflict's always going to happen. We're going to mess up. And I'm not always going to know when I messed up. And I need you to tell me so that I don't yeah. do it again. Yeah. Rick, when he, <clears throat> Rick's in my relationship, there have been conflicts. And because he is, he is not one to like, just not talk about things. Aren't you if, both have Aries in your chart? <laughs> yeah, we do. <laughs> his, he's a son. His, his son is in Aries and my, I, my, I'm a rising Aries. So we, <laughs> we have a tendency, but I actually had spent years and years of not yeah. saying my sister would say she doesn't say shit even if she's standing in it mm. so it took a long time and I can remember he would say you're gonna have to learn how to fight with me mm. and wow. I didn't understand that at yeah. all you have to learn how to fight fair right like but in a he regulated said, boxing match yes there's and respect. his term his term was because we have to fight fair for this, mm. what we have together. And so I guess maybe fight is the wrong word, but that's the word he used. You know As what? A, Even in a company though, you disagree in a boardroom. Yes. Right? And then mm -hmm. you would hope nobody quits and storms out, right? Like you still produce the product, mm -hmm. you still make the customer happy. Yeah. Yeah. And so it did come, it was worth it. And the more, you know, we got better at it. <laughs> I love it. Oh, this episode has been so good. I'm sure these topics will come up again um, in others. And if you liked this, we'll, we can definitely do a part two. So let us know. But if this episode spoke to your soul, please share it with a friend. And if you have time, give us some love on your preferred platform with a rate review and subscribe. You can also reach out to us via Instagram and YouTube under The Brightly Podcast or via email at brightlypodcast at gmail.com to let us know your thoughts. And we hope with that, you have a bright and beautiful day.